Good morning, everybody. 26th of June, 2021, Blue Broad Saturdays. Hope you'll enjoy the show wherever you're watching. We've got a massive one today. And I, I've got to say, I am truly honoured. I've got the Prince of Carlton on with me this morning. He's the greatest <laughs> MC this side of Craig Willis, former president of the Carltonians, Vince Lochasano. Mate, it, it's a pleasure to have you on. You, you've got a bit of a better backdrop this morning. Yes, I thought I'd give you a bit of a... Uh, a squeeze as, as to the backdrop uh, here in Carlton. Uh, this is the uh, Argyle Square Gardens behind me. I'm not sure if you can. I'll just might show you that. There you go. That's uh, Ligon Street behind it. So, um, yeah, thought I'd uh, enjoy a little uh, peaceful setting here on a Saturday morning. Why and, not? And it, it looks like for the moment, at the very least, it, it's not it's not pouring rain, which is important. No. Yeah, ho hopefully it'll hold out. I'm pretty sure it will. Does we've we well we've got a big show today we've got a lot to talk about so so let's jump straight into it there, there, it's a Carlton week it's uh, in the twenty first century is a lot different to a Carlton week in the twentieth and and that's what it's been this week we've had press conferences we've yeah. had a lot of mixed messaging and and then we've had the uh, the return of the Crips wings after our captain signed until <laughs> twenty twenty seven what what have you what what have you made what have you made of it? Let's start with Monday. M Monday was a yeah. I, I I'd love to hear your thoughts on Monday. Well, look, I think you can just summarise it by saying so far this week it's been all talk and no action. Hmm. The only time we're going to see the result of any of this is on su on Sunday afternoon against Adelaide and see whether all of that. Uh, transpires into a better performance and something we can be proud of because recently, uh, let's be honest, they have not produced anything close to a performance we can be proud of. Uh, I, I fully I fully agree with you. I think um, it, it, GWS on Saturday night was really, really galling. Um, yeah. I think some of the, the comments on Monday from the press conference, personally for me, I didn't like the press conference. Um, a lot of other people were the same. Um, we... I, we both agreed the effort comment was pretty curious when all key effort metrics were, yeah. you know, really, really out of whack in terms of pressure acts and tackles. And then I was, I was looking through just then, even just the, the distance covered on the ground. It was the biggest differential we've had so far this year. GWS yeah. covered it by 12 or 13 Ks, which is, which is a massive margin in distance um, yeah. covered and for a game plan, which relies on running. Um, significantly, that that was really disappointing. But you know, we we we've we've got to we've got to move forward um, yeah. from that. And and it's been all talk, uh, no action. It's about time we we have action. Otherwise, insanity is going to repeat itself for Carlton. Um, well, let's face it. Before the before the West Coast game, um, we were all saying that uh, you know we should really be winning this game. There's injuries galore in their side. Uh, if we play anywhere near our best, we should be able to win. And we put in a, a, an abysmal performance. And after that, the club reacted. The club finally uh, budged, if you like, yeah. flinched and said, right, we're having a review. Now, mind you, I think it should have been an internal review. If your club is operating as it should, you should be able to do these things internally with your CEO and your, and your general manager of football. The fact that they've decided to go external tells me that both from board level and from within the administration, they are clueless. They don't know what to do or how to go about this and they don't know what the questions are to ask or how to find the answers. And that's why they're saying help and they're going external to people like Matthew Pavlich and, and uh, um, Jeff Walsh, etc. and... You know, hoping that people from outside the club can tell us what's wrong inside our club from outside. I, I don't yeah. understand how that works. But anyway, um, that's by the by. The, the fact of the matter is that the whole announcement of that internal, of that external review should have put the rocket up coaches, players, yeah. etc. And it, it had no difference. Two weeks later, we've come off a week's break. And GWS looked like the fresher side. They looked like they'd had the break. And we looked like a, a side in need of a, uh, of a rest. There was yeah. no difference, in my opinion, between the way they went about the GWS game to the way they went about the West Coast game. And it was insipid. And you could just tell in the first five minutes that we were in trouble. Uh, and as usual, we put in that little, 
window of 15 minutes that gets us all excited and gives us some hope. And then the minute the pressure comes on and the game's on the line again, we go to water. And that's what happened yet again. We ended up having the worst loss we've had all year. And yeah. Cripps comes out on Monday and says, oh, no, the effort was there. Well, I don't think that washes on anybody. I'm sorry. And I have no doubt that both Patrick Cripps and Jacob Wiedering did not go out there of their own free will and it wasn't their call to say we should go in front of the media. They were told. They were trotted out there uh, like the people who should take the blame. And yet the people above them in the football department, CEO, board level, no one could be heard or seen anywhere. And I just, I just think that was poor to have just trotted out the players and made it all about them and it's, it's all their fault. I don't cop that. Yeah, I'm. It's it, it's it's a big call, and I, I tend to I tend to agree with that because and it's just know, the I'm language. Not I'm not saying they're partly. At, I'm not saying that they're not yeah. without blame. I'm I'm saying that everyone here is it is it's a, a collective. Fault. It's a collective. It's it's a collective, and I think um, what before before we move on to because that leads into another thing I want to talk about. Um, yeah, it's it's just been. It was it was really it was really galling, and it it's just it, it just gave off the vibes, unfortunately for me, that everything's a bit disjointed at the moment. Um, yeah. Now, you know that, that that's neither here nor there. But but if you want to talk about disjointed, um, the Lockie Plowman saga. <laughs> On Tuesday, he's announced he's not playing because he's not fit enough, and then they name him and they and they and they drop Luke Parks and um, Nick Newman. Now, for for me, this is that more than anything else that screams alarm bells to me. Yeah. Um, I hope Lockie Plowman has the best game he's ever played tomorrow um, for Carlton. I re I really do, but it 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 almost gives off the vibes that. And this is pure pure speculation. I'm just reading the situation. Um, it's it's almost like Russell's been overruled there, because if he's come out as head of head of performance, you know, head of you know fitness, that sort of thing, and he's come out and he said he's not fit enough, and then two days later he's playing. That that that's another thing that reeks of a move of desperation. Um, that that brings red flags, and it's you then think about the likes of you know. Zach Fisher, he came back and looked underdone, didn't have any sort of practice yeah. match for, and now he's out again with it, with an ankle injury. Um, Jack Martin hasn't looked the same since he's since he's come back. Yeah. He's been outran significantly. There's plenty of clips showing that. Um, Zach Williams at times, he's had niggles this year. He hasn't been able to um, you know, get to the <laughs> Zach Williams really that we know yeah. that, and we know that he can become. So it's it's just it's it's really concerning, and there's a comment on here which is probably probably fair. Parks should have been dropped regardless, but I guess at least Parks, you know, has been declared fit. He he, he wasn't it wasn't injury. He's been omitted. He was he's omitted. deemed fit to go. I don't know if Plowman's fit <coughs> to go. I don't know how you can say Plowman's fit to go when your head of football performance says he's not fit to go, and then he's well, fit to go. One, one, there's one of two things: either one, Andrew Russell is a bald-faced liar, or two, if he's being accurate in his description of, of Plowman's condition, David Teague has overridden him and said, I don't care if he's not quite right to go. I desperately need a defender in the side that's actually going to defend, not just run off, and yeah. I'm going to play him regardless. And he's and he's uh, pulled rank on him and uh, and declared that Plowman will play. And that's a very dangerous policy for a senior coach. That, that smacks of desperation. So yeah, it, it, it does. Um, it it so really, one or it the really other. does. That, yeah, I, it's a, it's concerned. I think, you know, we talk would about it selections. You, would, it selections you if, would it surprise you if Plowman was a last-minute withdrawal on Sunday afternoon? Um, yeah. Could they be playing well, it, those sorts of games? Yeah, it, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm looking at the emergencies, and well, I mean, you've got Newman, Newman's in the emergencies. It'll be interesting yeah. to see who they play in the VFL um, yeah. beforehand. So, I guess, look, I I wouldn't be completely surprised, but I think if it's a fitness issue and not an actual injury issue, then I then I would be. It's yeah, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. Um, before we get our first guest on for the morning, um, I just wanted to bring this up because. And we'll get into the crows a little later, but of course, 
the big news and the weekly dose of Carlton Kool-Aid from the Carlton Football Club is that Patrick Cripps has signed for six years. Yes. Um, it's, the, 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 timing, the timing of that, it's uh, to take the week before Harry signs, that's announced yep. during the week, makes it all feel really good. Yep. And then um, a couple of days before we go out for Adelaide <laughs> after our worst performance in a long time, uh, Patrick Cripps has signed for six years and everyone's feeling all giddy. And then and then we start selling some Crip wings. Um, well, there's, but, one, but there's one thing. I've made a big point about that, actually. If you haven't watched this preview, watch it because it's, it's a ripper. <laughs> But um, what, what did you think of the uh, – what did you yeah. what, what do you think of the contract? What, what do you deem it as successful um, for Crips in six years' time? Um, and you know, what's your thoughts on the Crips wings? Yeah, well, I'll just touch on the Crips wings thing. I mean, there's one thing that's been consistent at a Carlton Football Club all year, and that the minute there's the slightest bit of good news, whether it's even a win over – Gold Coast on the Gold Coast by 11 points, uh, there's an immediate email out there trying to send you something. Uh, why don't you celebrate by buying a Guernsey or, you know, Patrick Cripps has just signed a new contract. How about uh, buying one of these Cripps wings uh, framed things for, what is it, 300 bucks a, a pop or something? Um, oh, I think it's more now because he's because it's signed. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, he's, got a, he's got a signature. He's got official signature on the wings now. So. Yeah. They're obviously um, under the pump in the merchandise department to try and make more sales. Uh, look, in terms of the contract, I think uh, it's obviously um, a very long one. We, we've very rarely, if ever, gone to a contract of this length. I can't remember giving anyone six years before. Um, so that's probably set a record in, in, in Carlton terms, other than Zach Williams, of course, who came over with... Uh, uh, tremendous uh, proven track record as a midfielder, um, you know, and got paid as such for six years. How bloody ridiculous. Anyway, um, I think the Crips six years. I'd rather give someone like Patrick Cripps six years than Zach Williams, who hasn't proven himself as a midfielder, hasn't, uh, you know, hasn't really uh, been anything other than a halfback flanker. So that was a massive gamble that I think has backfired badly on whoever made that deal. Uh, the Crips, six years. Look, I think it's a bit long. I don't like any contract over four years, to be honest, because you just don't know. Uh, you can't foresee that far ahead what they're going to be like. He could be a broken down, you know, a broken down player by, by three or four years' time. We don't know because he's had back fractures. He's had all sorts of very concerning injuries. So it is a bit of a gamble from that point of view. Um I'm told that he's taken a big haircut on his mm. pay. Um, it's starting in the six hundreds or something, which would mean probably dropping one hundred and fifty or two hundred thousand dollars a year on what he's on now. Uh, that I find uh, strange, but at the same time, what I think has happened is that they've back ended this contract, and you'll find mm. that in the last few years of his contract, he'll be on well over a million dollars a year. So. Uh, the mail I heard last night was that the average salary over the six years is a million dollars a year. So whichever way you want to split it up, over the six years, he's going to get somewhere around $6 million. I yeah, think that's I, taken I don't, big, big, I don't have big so much, it, it is. I don't have um, so much concern that he – of the money. I mean, there's, there's a salary cap increase and whatnot. I think um, – but firstly, the first thing we have to say is good. Good for Crips, you know. Sure, it's it's a big well, it's, it's a big commitment for the, the captain to sign, and it's you know, um, yeah. Good look, on, he's our good captain. On. He's our pin-up boy. If he's got his contract that he's happy with, and that means that he's settled and he's happy to really look forward now and commit to Carlton and try and work towards holding up yeah. a Premiership Cup. Well, then that's a good thing, and and he has proven himself. Let's let's. Let's be honest. I know the last couple of years he hasn't yeah. quite been at the level that he had been previously, but he has been carrying that side for at least six years since Chris Judd retired. And um, I think he's deserved a good contract. So um, six years was a bit longer than I expected, but hell, uh, obviously the club's prepared to take a gamble to some extent. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think... Um you know, it's the, the length. The length is the the length is the question, obviously, um, for, for yeah. some people. I think if if Cripps can, you know, for mine, if he can help drive us to be an active final side and play a big part in that, that's how it's probably going to be deemed a, deemed a success. 
Yeah. Um, you know, it's he's, he, he has been a warrior for the club. There's there's no doubt. And you can't the, Cripps is by and large one bloke that you cannot question yeah. question the efforts of. Um, so it's it's great it's great for him. Um, yeah. I think if we were going to give six years personally for me, that that's you give that to a Sam Walsh. Yeah. Um, that's, sure. that's the sort of bloke you give it to. Um, I think we all just what we all want to see as a fan base is just Patrick Cripps. Yeah. Get, return or probably not even return. Get close to you know the 2019 form, and 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 I've got and I've got to say the way we play football does not help him produce at that sort of level. No, um, that's right. It, it, it does. It doesn't. It doesn't assist him. Now, you know, of course, we we didn't have a very good side back then. But if we can, you know, help him out more to be better, you know, we will be a better. When Cripps is playing well, we are a much better side with Cripps than without Cripps. There, there, there's no yeah. debate on that. Um, no question. No, I yeah, wish cool. him well. I wish him well. Yeah. Cool. It's a little bit of Kool Aid tomorrow, and hopefully they can. We can. We can get a win. We're, we're going to bring in our first guest of the morning. Um, he's joined us from Thailand. We've got Joe. He's a very good friend of the channel. He's a very good friend of the show. There he is. Good morning, Joe. How are you? Doing? Oh, very good. Can you see? Hello, you guys look a bit dark. Hey, Vince. Long time <laughs> no speak. Yeah, it's only about, what, 24 hours at least? <laughs> no, 12. Remember 12. you said I'll, I'll talk to you in 12 hours. I That's thought right. I'd take a, I thought I'd take a leaf out of Vince's book and sit outside, but I don't know if you can see me that well. Oh, you're going to make us jealous over there in Bangkok, probably well, 32 degrees we, at uh, 6 nah, o'clock in the morning? 6 o'clock in the morning, it's only 29. 29. Jeez, it must yeah. be, uh, you must oh, have jumpers horrendous. on. Horrendous. <laughs> well, I don't know if you looked at my Facebook yesterday, but I was sitting out having a coffee in 35-degree heat, mind yeah. you, and I saw a lady walk past in a full-length puffer jacket and scarf. <laughs> and my, I, looked at, I looked at the temperature and it said 35 degrees feels like 40. Poor person. She must have, she must have been from Arizona. Adam was saying last week it was 45 degrees. She, she must have been cold. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, hey, um, uh, let let go on, Joe. No, no, no. I was, I was saying I've been listening to the. Uh, I've been in the back room listening to you guys about you know the Crips and I. Feels like we only lost to GWS yesterday. I mean, we're never yeah. out of the news. <laughs> no, we're not. Do you think? Do you think maybe we can catch good news instead of you know some of these supporters are unreal. They're they. We need to sign Crips. We need to sign Crips. And then these same people, once he signs, says, oh, why would you give him a six-year contract? And he's just not happy. Yeah. Look, I, I agree with you, Vince. I, I don't think anyone should <coughs> more than three or four years. I mean, well, look, let's I, be I realistic. I think Riley made a good point. I think Riley made a good point. If you've got a player like Walsh at 20 years of age, I think he's turning 21 in um, in a week from now. Um, yeah. If you give him a, a six-year contract on what he's produced in his first three years, everyone would everyone would say, "Well done, you know, good on you for, uh, for for getting him in in the prime years of his life." But I think the concern here is that Patrick's already twenty-six, and as you head towards thirty, your body is not quite the same, especially if you're um, one of these uh, bull midfielders. Um, yeah, but that the tops are battering it. everywhere. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Do you really think Cripps will be there in six years? The way his body goes, I mean... Well, this is the concern. This is the concern Sorry. about whether the body will hold up. Uh, and there, yeah, and uh, therefore, if the body's not holding up, the form will start tapering off too. Yeah, I yeah. mean, good on him for getting... To, he, he does, if anyone in that club deserves it, it's him. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Imagine how he would feel when he sees Zach Williams and Jack Martin and Mitch McGovern coming in on oh. these big contracts. Yeah. Five, I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. I know Patrick Cripps and I know his family a little bit, and they're very honest, loyal uh, country folk. And yeah. if there's one thing I can be confident about uh, with him, uh, as m more than most other players, is that just because he's got his six year contract now doesn't mean he's going to take his foot off the petrol, uh, off the uh, off the accelerator. He's going to um, definitely keep putting in. And probably more so than ever, to prove himself to the Carlton faithful, and to not be uh, labelled as someone who, you know, the minute he gets his contract, all of a sudden he, uh, uh, you know, he starts taking it easy. I, I doubt very much that you'll see that. 
I think you'll now see more of it than ever before. I doubt that too. Hey, I I like that banner that you've written up there, Carlton versus Crom. I don't know what the Crom means, but we'll get to it. Will insanity repeat itself? Well, the definition of insanity is doing the same is, is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Well, we've been doing that for fourteen weeks. That's, so, a, that's actually a good point, Joe. Yeah. I never noticed that. Crom is that supposed to say crows, Riley? Or <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's an it's an internet sensation. Everyone everyone says go Crom for Adelaide. So it's just <laughs> sorry, um, Joe. We're, we're not up with all of these things, us oldies. <laughs> nah, too, too busy trying so, to do. Um, but, no, it's, Go on. Go on, Joe. No, but uh, I, I like it, though. Will insanity repeat itself? Well, what do you think? Oh, I'm here to tell you, I don't think anything's going to change. I mean, I listen, mm-hmm. I, I, being here in Thailand, Joe, in the morning, I in the shower, I, I listen to SEN, you know, just to get a little bit of home and r- read the yeah. paper. And David King made a good point. He said, I've never known someone to stick at a, a failed plan for so long. Yeah. And, and uh I don't know who, who spoke to him and said, do you think it's going to change? He said, well, he's been doing it for 14 weeks. Do you really think he's going to change? And how much can he change? How much can he change in a week? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, I well, really you, can can only, you can only tinker with a game plan halfway through a season. You're not going to adopt a totally different game plan. That's, that's almost impossible to do at this stage. I, I, I think all they can hope to do is to get uh, a better defensive mindset going um, to tackle. I mean, this is nothing to do with skill. This is to do with attitude and application. I mean, last well, week's tackle that, count was abysmal. So how can to, the to, hear Patrick Cripps, to hear Patrick Cripps yeah. come out on Monday and say oh. the F that's there, no, it's not, Patrick. <clears throat> no. You're not kidding anybody. Um, and I can tell you one thing. If we lose to Adelaide tomorrow, the Patrick Cripps six-year contract will be the furthest thing from anyone's mind. Mm-hmm. It'll well, all be forgotten about and it'll all be back on to you know full on pressure again on the coach and the rest of the club. Because but, but that, we yeah. should be we should be winning this game tomorrow. But but yeah, that I press know. conference that they held on Monday was a joke. Well why wouldn't you have had a member of the board, the CEO and a player? Like a, because a they're missing in front. action. Because they're yeah, but, missing in action. But but they, but they, they, they think we're that do they think we're foot. that stupid? Do, do they really think we're that stupid to to roll out, you know, look, Jacob Wiedering, he looked as though he didn't even want to be there, and I don't blame him. Right? They were trotted out, Joe, because yeah, but- they were made to take the blame for what's been going on and to say, yes, we're right behind Tiggy. What else do you expect players to say? No, we're not behind our coach? They can't go out <laughs> and say that. Um, they probably expect say them to probably, come out and probably. say anything other than, oh, it's all on us. We've got to show more... More, more application. We've got to show more effort. We've got to show more. Of course, they're going to go out and say that. What else yeah. can they say? Anyone yeah. who had, you know, yeah. who had vision against GWS and against uh, West Coast could have seen. Blind Freddy could have seen that there was yeah. no attitude. There was no um, effort being put in for the whole game. But uh, I, I, I hear, I hear everyone saying, "Oh, this week's a crunch game." Why? The season's over. There's no the only crunch is I think the crunch is for the coach. That's about it. Uh, you know, like and, and really, you should be playing some of these Lockie O'Briens. I mean, he he he's brought in as a wing. Play him on the wing. You you say to these blokes, you've got nine weeks to show to me why I need to re-sign you, right? Yeah. But no, we yeah. we do we do the same thing. Well, let's let's trot in the same blokes. Let's put them in the same positions. Let's pull out the same blokes. I mean. Listening about uh, Lockie Plowman, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's if he's not playing tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, how can how can your head of fitness come out and go? He's definitely not playing. Well, if he does play, later. if it, if he does play, it makes Andrew Russell like look, look, look like an absolute goose. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and, 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 a, and a blatant liar. That's what it makes him look like. And if he doesn't, play, I, 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 it I, makes I, the selection can look Russell, stupid. Man. He's been. If he's if he's been you know and this again this is speculation but if he's been overruled and they're like play, um, it's just you, you know my thoughts on that. Um, speaking yeah. of a game on Saturday, uh, Sunday, sorry, I, I keep saying so, Sunday. Um, I'm looking at a lot of the matchups for Carlton, and I, I, I've got to say I'm a bit concerned. The ruck is obvious; that's an obvious one to be concerned about. Riley O'Brien, yeah. 
um, against against T against Tom DeConing. Uh, we know how good O'Brien's been this year. Um, I look at their midfield, and I've got to say, it just looks it looks tougher. They they look like a tougher side and a quicker side than us right now. I mean, Ben Keys is in the form of his life. Rory Land is, you know, he's he's one that's moved from half back to the midfield, and it's like he's always played midfield his entire life. Yeah. Rory finally know what he can do. Um, yeah. It, it's it's gonna it's gonna be tough for Carlton tomorrow again. Probably the only one where you say we might have an advantage is Mackay on the matchup of Jordan Butts. That's and Jordan Butts has been okay this year. Um, what, what are your concerns going into the game on Sunday? Um, for a, like, wh- where do you think we can get exploited, and where where do you see Carlton potentially being able to um, you know maybe get some advantage on Adelaide? Mm. Look, I, go, I've, got to, I've got to admit, I don't know a lot about the Crows. I, I, I purpose because they're not played well. When their games come on the TV, I, I, I really don't sit there and watch. But I mean, what we need to do is have a look at the game against the Western Bulldogs. Okay, for the first two and a half quarters, the players were on, so we know they can deliver. Okay, I mean. We've we've got Williams is quick if we if he wants to use his pace. I mean you've got uh, Cripper in the middle. He'll he'll match it with with Laird, right? He'll he'll get the hard ball. I think we're really going to miss someone like Fisher, but he didn't look fit last week. I mean he was limping around even when they were running out. Yeah, he was I, clearly I, injured. Yeah, I, I think if we can move the ball quickly down to Harry and exploit. That that one on one that he could have, and and, and you know, like someone like uh, uh, Owies and Betts, just I'd just say to them, just stay at his feet. I don't want I don't want Harry Mackay up on the half back flank taking marks, right? But yeah. that's that's not his role. We, we need to, at, at best, I wouldn't let him go past centre half forward. I know this modern game is everyone pushes up, and and then when you get the ball, you got no one to bloody kick it to, yeah. right? So so. Mm. We really need to exploit Harry. And, and what we've got to do is we've really got to get that ball down to him quickly. And, and, and I think yeah. if we win the game, that's where we'll win it. He, he'll have a field day. But yeah, I, I don't know how we're favourites. I mean, Adelaide are even on, on top of us in the ladder. And, and that's saying something. I mean, we've won four games. Been in most, but... Uh, I, how do, you, how do you see the ruck going, Joe? Because that's my biggest concern is that our ruck stocks have been depleted yet again. Uh, young De Conning is, is, is developing He's and very growing, raw, but, he, very raw. but he, hasn't, he hasn't got the body yet to compete with someone like O'Brien for Adelaide. I, I, he's a nice, big, strong body and a big presence. I Look think they the, could get first use of the ball for most of this game, to be honest. Uh, yes and no, right? I, I'm a bit of the opinion that if you lose – okay, so this is where strategy and game plans come into play, okay? Mm. We know we're not going to get the advantage to the ruck. But if you're a smart midfielder, then you would look at what the ruckman is doing and, and go to that position. Mm-hmm. Right? This is where – I mean, have a look at Geelong. They, they haven't had a decent ruckman for years, Yeah. right? But they still get first use of the ball. Why? Because you've got someone like a Selwood, Dan- I call him Danger Thug because he's running around hitting everyone, but you've got <laughs> Dan- Danger, w- Danger F- I was nearly going to call him Dangerwood. But you've got Guthrie, you've got those guys that know how to read the play. Mitch, Mitch Duncan, yeah. Mitch Duncan. But they know they know that they're not going to get the advantage from, from their Ruckman, so they look at what the opposition Ruckman does. I would think someone like a Sam Walsh would would understand that. He he seems to have a bit of a football brain. Cripper's the same. But the other midfield... Well, I think, I think the, the, the genie's out of the bottle as of last week in terms of what yeah. you have to do to shut down Carlton. And if I think Sam Walsh from now on is going to have to contend with a tagger most weeks. I'm not sure who's going to get that job from Adelaide, but... It was proven last week that if you can shut down Sam Walsh, you shut down most of our midfield. But but and here, here again, here again, Vince is where was the support from an Ed? Kerner well, I made that or, point in um, to, I think it was in fan know. camps that you know, who supported him. This is where they've got to work more as a team and support each other and help each other. 
and oh. and and you know show a bit of physical presence out there. But, we we um, had a, last week it was uh, missing. We had another famous player, number five, Chris Judd, who used to get tagged every week. I mean, he's yep. a little he's a little bit further advanced than Sam Walsh. But you um, think yes, that, say but, so. <laughs> but you think that Chris Judd, director of football, right, would probably mm. go down there and have a word to him? I don't think Chris Judd's been at the club all year. I mean, someone said to me he just turns no. up for board meetings and that's about it. But maybe you know, not he, even that. But and and then you know we had a bloke <laughs> who, who was helping him last year, Greg Williams. I know there's soft cap issues, mm. but Jesus. He's always come out and said, I'd help. Even someone like Kuda said, you know, pick up the phone and I'll help. Well, well, pick up the phone, David T. Ask for help from these guys. Just even if it's, hey, hey Diesel, can you can you take Sam for a cup of coffee and just explain to him how you used to get rid of the taggers? I know Diesel used to belt them, but do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how, how, to play, but how to play on them. But, yeah. but, but we're, no support. No, no support. Yeah. Getting back I mean, to the game. Getting back to the game. Uh, what's, your, think, uh, what's your prediction for the weekend, mate? Right. Oh, Just before I've we got leave, a what's your prediction? I've got a horrible Sunday. I'm going to watch the VFL on, on TV first and then I'm going <laughs> straight into this. Honestly, my my heart wants Carlton to win, yeah. but I don't think we will. I, I I really I really can't see us turning it around after last week. It, to, to come from... To go from boiled lollies to chocolates in a week, um, I, I can't see it. I want us to win. I hope we win. But, but yeah. then it's which it's yeah. which Carlton turns up. Is it the Carlton that played GWS or is it the Carlton that ran out for the Western Bulldogs first two and a half quarters? If you can tell yeah. me that. Um, I can't. Um, it's been great to have you on. Um, we All right. will see you next week, and uh, let's hope next week's a little better. Let's hope we're talking about a victory. Let's hope so. All right, yes. I'll talk to you guys yeah. soon. See you, boys. Thanks, mate. See you, mate. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Good guy, well, Joe. Very good great guy. Great guy, and um, has um, a very simplistic view of a lot of things, but I'll tell you what, he identifies a lot of... Uh, a lot of things that uh, you know need to be mentioned. He does. He does. Now, the next person we have on, first time he's been on the channel. Um, if you've ever listened to a game of footy in Queensland, you're sure to have heard this guy um, use his dull set tones, for lack of a better term, over here. <laughs> he's a veteran broadcaster for Triple M, then for a, now for ABC. He was commentating Thursday night, Brisbane and Geelong. Most importantly, though, he's a very passionate Carlton man, and I'm being, I had the privilege of calling a few games with him at needful level when that was around, and um, he's, he's one that I really, really enjoy getting the opinion of. His name is Michael Price. I call him the name, uh, the, the voice of Queensland footy. Pricey, how are you, my man? Oh, very well, thanks, Riley, yourself, mate. Good day, Mike. Good, G'day. mate. Good. How's Sorry, it going? I, I gave you a bit of a big intro there. Um, the voice of Queensland, voice of Queensland footy, footy, I footy up. beside him every week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Michael, do they call you Michael? Yeah, you, Michael? You and... Do they call Michael, Michael, Mick? Uh, Michael usually pricey is the go. Yeah, so it's not the same yeah, as the horse but... trainer, Mick Price. <laughs> That's exactly right, except he's got Favorite a little bit more than that. He certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Pricey, I, b before we get into current Carl, like, it's always good to ask people on this sort of Carlton story. So, um, give us a little bit of a background of your time as a Carlton supporter, where it began, what you've seen, um, and, and mm. basically, yeah, a bit, a bit about you. Well, um, let's put it this way. My grandmother was a mad Carlton supporter. My grandfather, mad Geelong. The Price family comes from around Corio Bay and Geelong. Um, so uh, I was indoctrinated early. Uh, so that makes me a 56-year supporter now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we've seen the good times and the bad. Uh, uh, recently a lot more bad than we would like. Um, the greatest memories are attending the 1987 Grand Final 
where Der, uh, Dermot Brereton got fixed up by David Reese jones uh, We Bloody won the Rezies day, that day as well. Yes, we did. Yeah. And it was just one of the great days of football. Just <laughs> I was by half time, I was pleasantly uh, smiling. Let's put it that way. Um, and it would have it would have felt like Queensland there that day too, Mike. It was. It was the short sleeve shirt, and uh, my parents were <laughs> staying degrees. in Kew. At the, yeah, exactly. My parents were living in Kew at the time, and so we caught the tram back, and it was yep. in the heart of Hawthorne Territory. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> the celebrations on the way back, there was about eight of us Carlton supporters just going off, and the whole tram full of very disappointed uh, Hawthorne fans. But that was one of my greatest mm. memories as, as a Carlton uh, fan of you guys would love this one. Uh, I, I went to the 99 grand final, luckily enough, and um, uh, it was a, a bad day for us. But uh, this wonderful, quietly spoken Indigenous man was uh, uh, sitting behind me. And I yeah. turned around and it was the great Sid Jackson. Sid Jackson. And uh, I, 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 luckily enough, I was working for Triple M, so I pulled my phone out and did a quick <laughs> interview with him. <laughs> And um, he was Fantastic. so gracious, so gracious, so wonderful. And um, he gave us a few comments throughout the game as well. But um, that was and a I think highlight. You'll find he, I, I think you'll find what, uh, Sid turned 77 this uh, this coming week. Yeah, he's – boy, he doesn't look it, though. Have you seen pictures no, he of him? Does he's does he? Very Still sharp for 77. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. He is very sharp. But, um, look, he's one of the greats. And, look, I, I've just been a, a passionate fan of the Baggers like you guys. I, I watched them week in, week out. When I lived in Melbourne growing up, I left there when I was eight years older. We used to go to the Junction Oval a lot to see Carlton yeah. play Fitzroy or whatever. Um, but then moved up here um, and it, I, I uh, started following Cooper Root because of the CFC. Yeah. But mm. uh, we moved uh, to main territory, the Tigers. So, anyway, so um, it's been a, 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 just a wonderful journey in Queensland footy. But from afar, watching the Baggers go through their trials and tribulations, and it's been a tough twenty years, boys. Sure has. It, uh, it, it has been a tough twenty years. It's been a very tough twenty is, years. Um, what I what I wanted to sort of ask you because you, you've been so close. Um, with your what, what you do to the to the Brisbane Lions, particularly in the last few years. Now we sort of started at similar points five or six years ago with where we were going. Both clubs, we both saw that we weren't going where we wanted to go, and now yeah. it's oh, it looks like. Uh, what 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 are the key differences in how they built? You've seen from close up compared to what we've done, and what what some things we could we can learn? Because I've been fascinated by it, and a lot of people have been fascinated by it. It's a very easy comparison to make between Carlton and Brisbane. Look, it is, um, and I think it's a fair one too. I think it's a fair one. When you look at, I think, any football club, uh, regardless, uh, you'll see it across the board. Uh, if there's off-field turmoil, it does translate to on-field. There's no doubt about that. Uh, so the back room needs fixing. We all know that. Um, that was the first port of call for the Brisbane Lions. They they fixed the back room. They they brought in a an untried yet extremely experienced measured man in Chris Fagan. Um, uh, he'd been around a long time, been involved in Hawthorne system, all of those. And David Noble, they tidied it up all in the back, but their recruiting is, I think, the major difference, Riley. The the style of recruiting, they've gone for players. If you have a look across the board, there's a, you've got your McCluggages who are, are silky, but you've got Bailey, Starcevich. You've got players with a little bit of mongrel in them, and this is the one. Thing. I've been banging on. My father hates me talking about this all the time. He's he's a 70-year blue bagger. But, yeah. please, boys, if I was Carlton, and this is just pulling a name out of the hat, I'd go to Brisbane right now and say, hey, Reese Matheson, how would you like three years playing the midfield and you scare everybody? Something we do not have. We yeah. do not have at Carlton. And I no, we, love... We've got Oops, sorry, you're cracking there. 
No, I'm. I've, I've got you back. You just lost a little bit. Have you, have you got me? Yes. Okay. It um, must be the weather. Fully agree. We've got no aggression at the moment. It's the way. Yeah, it's horrible out here in Karina. It's been. Funny. Um. Oh. I don't know what it is. But yeah, I, I think, like, um, yeah. Sorry, mate. Um, I, uh, Matheson, I fully agree on because we have no one at the moment that's got any level of aggression at Carl, really. No, no one, and we haven't. I know we keep people keep banging on about Mitch Robinson, but you spot on a guy like Matheson who is just just a he calls himself the barometer, the barometer for Carlton in that midfield. I think you know, mm. and you, you you can see potentially players that we've even got on the list, like your stalker who's got that in him, but we just seem fixated yeah. on playing him de defensively at the moment. It's, it's just a mix. It's it's a mix match that I really do not, I, I don't see the direction of at all. Um, and I, I think your thoughts it, are pretty similar, I'm guessing. Yeah, look, our, our defensive structure, I think, is appalling. Uh, we, But bottom line, and the one stat that just absolutely kills me every time, uh, I, I, I've called a lot of elite level sport and most of the time the skills are reasonably similar. It's boys uh, just, uh, they, they don't look like they're clearly educated in what needs to happen or they're clear on what yeah. has to uh, or what is required at AFL level as far as intent goes. 41 tackles in the entire yeah. game of football the week after a review was called. Absolutely appalling. That yeah. shows me the mindset is completely wrong. I'd like to, and yeah. it's a simple game for you. If you go hard, mm. you create um, a little bit of confusion or or whatever in the opposition. And, yeah, Mitch Robinson's a great uh, example. He's the obvious one. But he's probably also a, a glaring example of the fact that our development gave up on him too early. I would have thought. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think it's we we went we went down a path. I think this no rat bags at Carlton ever since Fev left. Um, and you know that's that that's fine. Um, but there's a difference between no rat bags and no dickheads. Sydney had a no dickheads policy, but you know they had their players in there. They had that in them. Yeah, they they had it in them. Carlton Carlton are two nights at the moment. And they've been like that for a long time. We, we've got nice people. Like you talk to Carlton players outside of football, they're, they're some of the nicest blokes you'll meet, but they play like that on the field. It's a match. It's a match um, for the way I see how Carlton are going. Um, where okay, do just, you... Just to go back to the Brisbane thing, at tomorrow. Can I just... Sorry, just a quick one to go back to the go Brisbane comparison. Uh, they're, yeah. they're targeted... Um, uh, um, recruitment of country Victorians as opposed to city Victorians. The, the mentality of the yes. country Victorian seems to be a little bit easier to gel with than the, uh, the mentality of the Queenslander, which is a little bit more laid back, a little bit less taking oneself seriously. Um, uh, so I think that they like taking McCluggage with Bear, that type of thing, lumping players together, making sure recruiting bona fide leadership in Dev Robertson. Um, sure, we, we got Sam Walsh right, but he was the number one glaring obvious number one. Uh, Crippers are given, but um, some of our recruitment of late, we've thrown big dollars at blokes who love banging around, um, but not actually putting the head over the agate and uh, bleeding for the blue. And I would like to see, I'm, as you can see, I'm an old school footballer. I've, even our most skillful Carlton sides, the most skillful, successful ones over the history, have had blokes like Des English. You know what I mean? They've had blokes like Earl yeah. Spaulding, who just skillful, but will just run through his grandmother to get the ball. You know, so I, I don't see any blokes with a big set, put it that way, on them. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I, I see lots of skillful, lovely, wonderful blokes, but footy can mm. be dirty, so and the baggers have to get dirty. Oh, it, it has to be. We and we've we've talked we've talked about this consistently for years that um that it that it needs to, that it needs to that it needs to be dirty. 
Um, do you think we, we talk? You talked about backroom, and and we've we've talked about this for for a while now. Um, off you know offline, is what sort of leader do you think Carlton Carlton needs in in that backroom? Um, and for, if it's a co- coaching, and there's you know there's board issues as well, but if we're talking purely football department, do you think we've got that? We've got that mix right in our major figures with Lloyd as the head of football, T as the head coach, and you know the, the people around him. The we'll, we'll start we'll start on T because that's the most pertinent question. Do you think that's that's the right mix for us? And do you think he can he's the guy, or do you think we need to look elsewhere? I think that we made our decision a little rashly um, based on some emotion. Um, however, the dis- decision yeah. was made. I think the guy can coach. I really do. I think he can impart a message. I think mostly what damages him is his um, is his uh, outward persona to the rest of the world. He's a very well spoken, quietly spoken man um, who has been obviously dishing out some um, uh, rhetoric with regards to how the team's going and stuff. So he's getting pounded for dishing out positivities. <laughs> like like Bolton did with yeah. the green shoes. You can't dish out yeah. positivities when you're yeah. getting belted every week. Um, look, I, I would think the review yeah. is going to point out that perhaps he might be the right men, uh, guy, but he doesn't have the right people around him. And perhaps he needs a yeah. very, very strong... And I'm not mentioning... I'll just pull names out as somebody of that type as opposed to that person... But like a Mark Williams, yeah. like a uh, like a Paul Ruse, a mentor slash um, sidekick, a Batman for David Teague's Robin, somebody who. But look, I, I look at it too. It, Teague looks like such a lovely bloke. Mm. I'm tired of watching Alton be populated by lovely blokes. You don't yeah. win flags oh, with lovely blokes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, look at Humphrey. Look at the recently retired Humphrey, one of the gr- loveliest human beings to uh, to grace the footy field. And when he mm. retires, you know what I mean? He, the, 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 the guy just needed to play 100% hard. If he was had a little bit of Dusty Martin about him, not the skills, the, the nasty bit. <laughs> a little oh, yeah. bit of Richmond 100%, 100%. No, oh, hundred percent. I think you know it's been undersold as as well, and you know it was the right time. But we we miss guys like him. I know he was in for a lot of time. So it's hard to point out, but we're listing guys like Humphrey, but Cade Simpson as well. That's one where I think we're really missing from just a leadership and just a bit of guttural instinct within himself for the side. It's it's just gone, and that that hasn't been replaced. Um, unfortunately, which which is the real, which is the real disappointing thing. I, I think on Teague as well. The, the one thing, and I, I don't know if the same as me. Teague was one of the most uncompromised hardest players I've seen play footy. Uh, he didn't have yeah. the talent necessarily, but he was. But he went hundred miles, and his team doesn't play it. It's just, it's fascinating to me. Yeah, I, I'm. I still think there's a mixture of personalities. Um, you know, as far as playing group goes, I think, uh, and I'm not going to yeah. name names because I don't want to embarrass some young men. But the, I do believe that there's a, a good patch of the Carlton list that um, perhaps like their bottom white, and perhaps uh, don't they didn't have to leave Melbourne City when they got drafted. They're just hanging around the club. They're having lots yeah. of smoke blowing up their freckle. They're getting paid a lot. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah. I, if I was the baggers, in all seriousness, I would have been scouring for the last six months all aspects of the uh, state leagues and find a couple of blokes who have actually really struggled to get their spot, like Mickey Gibbons did to start. Um, but have a look at some of those blokes that are seriously just desperate for a chance, desperate for a chance, not oh. ones that have been in the under-18 system and a top-10 draft pick since they were 15. 
uh, and uh, having the billows between the cheeks. I'm talking about blokes that are desperate. Your Sam Collins from the Gold Coast types, who's ended up being their best and fairest winner. We need blokes with uh, stubble. <laughs> That's what we need. Some 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 old some old blokes uh, from the docks in Melbourne <laughs> or something. Hundred percent, and you you see it you, you see it in the state league leagues all the time. I mean, even mm. Don. I mean, even in our in in the Neefel days, but even this year with the VFL, I, I was shocked no one went after any um, from the top of my head. Anyone from Southport wasn't drafted. Not just because they're going, well, well, but so. there is some there is some talent that plays for the Shark. Just quickly on that, and even like you guys, like your Crossleys. I'm shocked Brandon yeah. Crossley hasn't you know got his second chance because he's playing like a man possessed and he's young and he knows he can all be lost because of what happened to him. Um, it, it, it shocks me. And he's the sort of bloke that I think would fit really well at Carlton, but that, that's neither here nor there when we're in list management. Um, no, but I, I agree tomorrow. You, Ryan. I agree. Ryan. Yeah, go on. That stuff is go good. On. That, sorry, that stuff is the thing that really annoys me is that uh, – but that's, a, a I think, a system – um, an AFL-wide problem with the system with regards to relying too much on the elite draft picks. You know, we've all got stories of top ten draft picks that just didn't ended up end up being players, and the, and the number seventy-five draft pick who ended up winning a Brownlow. You know that type of thing. We need to be a little deeper into the psyche of the players, not just their footballing ability the fact that they might like to cook for themselves, the fact that they like to live away from their parents. Start yeah. recruiting mature people as opposed to younger blokes who like their backsides wiped. Yeah. Um, Harsh but fair, go, Riley. Right. <laughs> Harsh but no, I, I fully agree with you. I, I, we're in agreement. We, we've been in agreement for a long time. I, I think... There's a lot of problems at Carlton. That's certainly one of them. Um, yeah. Tomorrow, what are your thoughts um, with the teams? I, I think Adelaide have probably actually got better personnel, unfortunately, out there than us in mm. terms of the way they're playing at the moment. And, they, again, they've got blokes that care and are uncompromising like Ben Keys. I'm just going to throw yes. Ben Keys out there and just um, that that yeah. one hurt. That one hurts me. And I think um, Brisbane fans have wondered well, why we he saw that. We saw that, Riley. Played. We you and I called Ben Keys a lot playing in the Neefel for Brisbane. The guy couldn't get a game in the um, in the senior yeah. side. Uh, he couldn't bust his way through. He's a former Queensland captain in the under-18s and a ball magnet. And when given the opportunity to yeah. do what he does, um, instead of playing as a small forward in Brisbane, they tried to reinvent him as a small forward mid. And, no, he's just gone in the midfield. That's what he does for Adelaide, playing where he wanted to. And the kid's got... Uh, some absolutely great games under his belt. He's a good player and a nice kid, Ben Keys, and he's the type that I was glad got a second chance. There's a whole bunch of them, and yeah. you know there are, there are in the state leagues, mate. We've watched enough state league footy that some of the AFL players yeah. uh, should be instantly swapped for some state league players. Well, Darcy, Darcy tomorrow, Cameron was one. Oh, Darcy Cameron was one that went to um, Collingwood. Look... Uh, McAdam's yeah, doing yeah, quite good. nicely for Adelaide, isn't he? Um, uh, as he looks terribly yeah. over the back and thinks, "What the hell happened to Mitch McGovern?" So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's all I, I can say. Is, what you, but what you, no, tomorrow, I think Adelaide actually. Um, I think they will shock us a bit. I hope they don't. Yeah. I want to see. I want to see Carlton yeah. play with uh, just a little more intent, right? That's the bottom line. That's my theme for this morning. Intent, desire, want, whatever you want to call it. We need it. And we need it bad. Oh, God, yeah, we need it badly. Um, Pricey, it's been a pleasure to have you have you on. Um, great to chat. Feel free to jump on wherever. I'm sure we'll see each other around the traps and we'll be texting tomorrow, probably in anger. I hope not, but there will be some anger, I I'm sure, mate. Say, thanks again. Really appreciate it, mate. Cheers, Riley. All the best. Go to the baggers. Cheers, mate. Have a good one, buddy. Go to the baggers. He is an outstanding gentleman. We lost Vin, so we're going to bring him back in. Last guest of the day, we are going to bring in Dom as well from, from Japan. I'm back. Um, 
I don't know if what happened can. there. It just cut totally. out, Riley. Looks like we haven't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what happened there as well. But he's he's a ripping guy, Pricey. Got a Terrific. hell of a lot of time for him. Lovely um, to hear that beautiful uh, he's a, he's radio, voice on him too. radio voice on him too. Oh no, it's 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 dull set. Man. It's dull set tones. Um, Dom, how are you, mate? Do you no, Dom, how are you? Cheers, mate. Cheers. Yes, drinking the elixir of life. Cheers. How's things going Early in, in the morning? Uh, how's things going in uh, lovely Tokyo, Japan? I'm actually in Osaka. Um, oh, you're and in I Osaka. Just to follow on from what Joe was talking about, about people walking around with puffer jackets in 35 degree <laughs> heat. Beanies are a thing in summer. So it's, <laughs> we're heading into summer now, so I've got the beanie on. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, it's eight degrees here in Melbourne and I've only got a cap on <laughs> and short sleeve Carlton top. <laughs> Uh, mate, the cap, caps caps are caps are wonderful. I mean, I've got one on and I'm indoors. And I mean, ad admittedly, the scenery compared to um, everyone else here. You've got the lovely background. Joe had outside. You've got a lovely thing. I've got a set of lights. There you go. So it's not it's not quite it's not quite as good as the uh, Prince of Carlton. Um, <laughs> tomorrow, to tomorrow. What 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 are we what are we thinking? Um, it's I. I I, I haven't said it as as much. Oh, it looks like we might have lost Dom. We've had some internet. Oh, that is back. Um, yeah. To, for, for me, and I, I hate to I hate to say this, um, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I almost think every week that goes by, and if we have another performance like we did against GWS, unfortunately, and he's not the only problem. He's far from it. There's a lot of problems. But David Teague's role is starting to become untenable. What, what are your what, what, what are your thoughts on that? If I might jump in there, um, you know, all week I was thinking about Teague and, you know, I mean, what a week it's been. Um, I just feel that he's too stubborn um, with his game plan and he's too stubborn with his approach to the game in general. I mean, everyone's been pointing out the bleeding obvious and that is his game plan isn't working and his tactics aren't working, and even his positioning of the players is not working, you know. Um, Liam Stocker, you know, continues to be played in the back line. You know, why don't you give him more centre bounce time, you know, as a midfielder? I mean, why is he persisting with something that is obviously necessary for the development of this kid in order to bring out the best of him by playing him in the back pocket. I mean, why he put him on Toby Green when we play GWS uh, in, in the fourth quarter, my, my God. Wouldn't that have been a perfect time to roll the dice and actually throw him in the middle rather than put him on Toby Green? And um, I was just wanted to pick up something that Pricey was pointing out about um, the mongrel and, you know, Devin Robinson is someone I've been following, you know, as... Oh. He was picked up at, at number 22. We had an opportunity to take him. And this boy, I mean, he's got... We had two opportunities. We, we had two. Two opportunities because we, we, we took Philp as well. Yeah, we took Kemp <laughs> and we took Philp. I mean, in my opinion, we should have taken Kemp and then Robinson, you know, and that would have been perfect. Um, but this boy, you know, he's got leadership skills. He's got that mongrel that we need at the club. And, you know, people were going on about his dis disposal efficiency. He had 16 possessions last night and he went at 81%. And I tell you what, he was also played in the middle. I, I think he was like number one or two for Brisbane intending centre bounces. And he's only yeah. in his second season. So what's the problem with playing Stocker in the middle and giving him centre bounce time as well? <laughs> Bloody hell. You know, so... You know, I, I guess I'm just backing up what Pricey was saying. We need to begin. We need. We have to target players with a bit more, um, you know, aggression now. And you know, this has got to be part of our change in the future direction of the club with our recruiting. You know, I'm and and I, I don't think that Teague is really bringing that out in a in our players and the coaches around him are bringing that out in the players. So, you know. To sum it up, you know, his stubbornness is 
perpetuating the problem that we are facing at the moment. You know, I I stuck my neck out when we well, played West Coast. Sorry, last thing. I stuck my neck out when we played West Coast and I said, we're going to win this game. You know, we have the talent. It is just impossible to lose. Um, but where we didn't have the talent was our game plan and our approach to the game. And basically the better coach side won despite the cattle, you know, and that is where Teague is falling down. Sun Tzu, if you know yourself but don't know your enemy, you're going to win half of the time. If you know yourself and you know your enemy, you'll win all of the time. If you don't know yourself and you don't know your enemy, you're going to lose all the time. And that's what's happening with David T. He doesn't realise that he is making these massive mistakes on an ongoing basis. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, we can, it's an interesting we can see thing. Though, can't we, um, pardon? We can What'd see it, though, can't we? Why can't, the Carl- why can't the Carlton coaching staff see all this? We can see it as basic supporters. Because they're, cause they're oh. stubborn. And they're doubling down. Mm. They, it's, they are it's, doubling it's down. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you, it's, I think it's, it's on a, one, one of the Carlton podcasts, they pointed out um, that... Now, I'm I'm paraphrasing what they said, but they pointed out that um, David Teague said, not one one time in my two years have the players executed my game plan as I have wanted it. Now, not (laughs) in the game plan. Doesn't that tell you everything? (laughs) Not only is he (laughs) passing the buck and not taking responsibility, but, you know, there comes to a point where you have to admit that you are failing in your approach. And the good coaches then respond to that, look at the Mm. situation and make the necessary changes. And that is where I'm most concerned about David Teague is he doesn't seem to have that capability. So whilst I believe, you know, he needs a fair go, Mm. if he's going to continue with this, no, he's done. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's it's, it's insane. I I, I just... um... It's funny because obviously Pricey just said we, he, he called the game on Thursday night, um, and he and from his vantage point, I think a lot of others were the same. Robertson just treats Selwood. He kills. Yes. It. has that same ability in the middle, except we're pigeonholing him against a guy like Toby Green or Liam Ryan, um, those sort of Luke Bruce, those sort of. Play. It's insanity. Charlie, now, you Cameron. can't tell me as good as Deb. Charlie Cameron, Stocker has that ability in him. And I know I keep banging on about Liam Stocker. I Liam Stocker's ball. I love Stocker. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm pro Stocker. And we, I just feel the, the way they're using him is really disappointing uh, right well, I, right now. Um, I think... I think the, go on. Sorry. I think the Stocker situation encapsulates many of the problems that we face at this club. You know, the stubbornness mm. of the coach, um, the the unwillingness to really um, focus on the development of our players, you know, the fact that we always feel, you know, watching the development of the players that they are lagging behind the rest of the competition. Don't you feel that? That, you know, we bring in all of this talent and then as soon as they walk in the door, that is when you have to start focusing on their development and bringing the absolute best out of them whilst instilling the highest of standards. And I just don't feel that we do that as a club. You know, our culture is, you know, sitting in that kind of grey band of mediocrity that we talk about. Where where are the people who are driving those absolute standards? But uh, can, I, can I just interrupt you there, Dom? It's, it's all good, though, because I'm just about to order my Crips wings. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all okay. I'm about to water my crew wings. <laughs> and and it's, it's, all, it's all good. Are, are those crips, are, are, by the way, Riley, are those, are, those crips, are those crips wings going to sit nicely on your mantelpiece right next to your Chris Judd chicken wings? <laughs> They'll sit next to my chicken wings. They'll sit next <laughs> to... Uh, that, that, that'll, sit, that'll sit right next to um, a, a very important part in my kitchen... My set of five wooden spoons. <laughs> oh. Five wooden spoons. It's yeah. interesting to hear Dom's. Like that's, that's, that's where that's where he's right about. I think he's right about Teague. 
who happens to be a Taurus. So that's the most stubborn star sign you can possibly get. So maybe that's something to do with it. But um, I think what we're identifying is that whether it's players, whether it's coaches, uh, administrators, and even through to the board, there are issues everywhere at this club. And there's no one quick fix and there's no one silver bullet that's going to fix it. Um, and there's certainly not one messiah, yeah. even if they decide to sack Teague and mm. get in another coach. I don't care what coach you bring into this club. I don't care whether it's Alistair Clarkson or Ross Lyon or Damien Hardwick or Adam Simpson or Luke Beveridge or anyone else. It's not going to be fixed by employing one person. But the, cultural, the cultural issue, the toxic culture of mediocrity that has filtered right through this club has got to start at the top. That's where it's got to be fixed, from the top down. If it's not imposed at the very highest level and then those standards insisted upon right down the chain, nothing's going to yeah. change. And we've seen over the last 20 years yeah. How many coaches have been brought in as the Messiah, right? Pagan, Malthouse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, uh, players, Judd, um, you know, now Cripps is the Messiah, six-year contract. It's not going to fix anything if the culture is not right from top to bottom. Yeah, premierships are damn hard to win, and if you haven't got the right, uh, the right winning culture permeating right through your football club from the board level down, forget it. Not going to happen. I'd love us to... Um, is, it, is it Stephen Wells? Um, yeah, the, recruiting guy. Yeah, from Geelong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he's Geelong. just stepped away from his role at Geelong. Jeez, I'd love us to bring him in as, mm. like, um, football department manager. He would be brilliant. Don't know if that's well, going to happen. Quick well, prediction out of time, gents. Um, quick yep. prediction for, for, for tomorrow. Quick prediction for tomorrow. And then you go, Dom. Go, we'll go with you first, Dom. Um, uh, I can't see anything but an Adelaide win, unfortunately. I think they've got it covered all over the park except for Harry. Um, so if Harry kicks a massive bag, we might win. Yep. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> sad to say, but I, I, I see us losing. Yeah. Vince? Um, look, I think it's going to be a very close game. Um, I think we're going to have our moments tomorrow where we think we might just win. And then we're going to have our moments where we think, uh-oh, I think maybe we're going to lose. I think it's going to yeah. be a, a, a nail-biter. And yeah. I, I'm also predicting that when it comes to the crunch, uh, until I see this side produce something that's required when the crunch comes, I'm not going to back them. So... Adelaide by eight points for me. I think, yeah, yeah if, I'm, if we take our chances early, uh, we're, we we have an opportunity. Yeah. But if we yeah. if we miss, you know, our chances early, I think we're done. Yeah. Yep. I think um, to, for, for us to win tomorrow, this game has to be over by three-quarter time. If it's going to be tight in the last quarter, we're going to lose for mine. We just haven't shown any of that ability to show spine in those situations at, at all this year. Adelaide has. They, they mowed down Melbourne. They beat, they held firm against Geelong. They mowed down St Kilda last start and they've had a rest and they're ready to go. Um, if you, if you give them a look, if you look, one thing Adelaide's proven is that yeah. if you give them a sniff, they're good yeah. enough to take the opportunity. And if, we, oh, they're, if, if they're within striking distance with 10 minutes to go, God help you because they'll, they'll, they'll go for yeah. it. They are prepared to back themselves. And, and well, I've been impressed with some of their performances, especially against Melbourne and St Kilda. Yep, that, and let's not forget they absolutely smashed us last year. In the, oh, like, you mean like, you mean the uh, Bryce Gibbs testimonial uh, send off? Oh, I didn't want to bring that up, but now we yeah, <laughs> just, that, that, that oh, we haven't got much to go by on form. Uh, yeah, that's um that that that, and then of course, and he might have requested it, but but we don't we don't chair off Cade Simpson, but we chair off Bryce Gibbs. Unbelievable, but, but but hey, and I and I, and I love Murph, but at least you know, got to got to bring Murph back in. Well, we better get yeah. Bryce Gibbs back to chair Murph off when he's uh, when he's finished. Uh, <laughs> those Vince, those grey skies behind you might be a sign of portent for the next. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not too uh, bad, is it? 
Oh, it's, it's, it we depends. It, left, yes, right. It's 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 good. So look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Melbourne. Well, if I can leave yeah. you with one thought, go for it. And if I was to be able to have a chance to talk to the players, I'd say, you know what, boys. At this stage, you've got to make a decision. Hmm. You either want to be involved at the Carlton Football Club or you want to be committed to the Carlton Football Club. It's a little bit like bacon and eggs. The chicken's involved, but the pig, my word, he's committed. So what are you going to be, <laughs> the chicken or the pig? <laughs> get and on mate, with it and get committed. I'm just it's thinking how I'm going to explain that to my wife in Japanese. <laughs> yeah, I don't, bacon yeah, and eggs, I don't. Dom. Bacon and eggs. Bacon are and you eggs. involved or are um, you committed? <laughs> and that's a, that, that, that's a good that's a good note to leave it on. Thank thank you, gentlemen. Thanks to Pricey. Thanks to Joe. It's it's good it's good as always to have you on. And and by God, I hope we're talking about a win next week. Mm. By I God, hope. I hope. Fingers um, crossed. Fingers fingers. Fingers crossed. I, I, I want I want to have a little bit of cool. I want to have a little bit of Kool Aid. I just lost. I just lost my phone. <laughs> oh, I want a little bit of Kool Aid. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good day. And uh, above all, you work, fellas. Go, boys. Right, boys. Go, boys. Go, yeah. go, 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 go